Hey lads, welcome to another commentary video, this time we are in Knockhood Offensive and this is going to be a plus 20 fortified explosive key. Now this is a very interesting uh, dungeon, it has interesting bosses, it has a lot of trash which uh, could be challenging, so let's go through all of the mechanics and uh, all the pools that uh, you're going to be doing in this dungeon, along with a few skips and uh, cool tricks that you can use in your keys and in your runs. Now the first thing to mention here, usually you want to lost the very first pool in this dungeon, so that your lust is back up for the second boss later on, so this is exactly what we're going to do here. And uh, you pull uh, a bunch of those uh, Norkud mobs, uh, which have uh, different um, skills and different uh, things that you have to be prepared for. So uh, the War Spear, which is on the bottom left uh, of your screen right now, is the uh, scariest mob uh, as long as you're a healer, of course. Uh, it's what it's going to do is, uh, as you can see, it actually charges people and it leaves a bleeding dot on them. Right now there's uh, a stacking, two of them on my priest, so uh, be prepared to heal these uh, a lot. Usually it charges people um, on, on the range part of your team, so if you have a warlock or somebody else who can bait it and they don't take much damage, that's fine, but sometimes it might be even you, if you have all melee, uh, it might be even you who hits the charges, and uh, especially if you have only one ranged, uh, it could be very challenging because you'll be getting stacking debuffs uh, and uh, that could, especially in four to five weeks, uh, could chunk people down. Now, uh, the other thing to mention here, there is a war storm coming from the uh, Lance Maester, and this mob also has a big cleave, so uh, usually it actually one-shots people, so there's nothing for you to hear if that happens, but uh, be prepared, especially on lower keys, uh, if your melee is not careful, they, they could actually require some help as well. Uh, that mob also does a shout that you need to interrupt, uh, that buffs the other... Um, mobs as well and then uh, I think is the uh, horn color rally the, the, the clan this is the cast that goes on right now you cannot interrupt that but uh, you can stun the mob fear it hex it etc and this is something usually that you want to do because uh, it will also buff the rest of the mobs so um, you can use your cap totem on this one and uh, make sure that these do not go off uh, so I think that's pretty much all the mobs that uh, present some kind of a, of an interest. Uh, actually, there is a Beastmaster that can actually call a bird that charges a person. And if that bird actually charges a person that's uh, on the same... Um, uh, th th if that person also has a uh, dot on them from the um, War Spear, it could be very challenging to, to heal. Uh, but other than that, uh, depending on the pools, uh, you might have... Uh, a couple of war spears in some of them, and uh, you will also have to uh, keep interrupting the horn masters if they're there and watch for the cleaves on the uh, lance master. So, you want to clear the patrols, uh, the patrol that goes in here in the middle between those three um, ballistra platforms or little hills, uh, which is where the boss is going to land, and the patrol that we cleared at the very start with the last was actually a bigger patrol that goes on the side, but uh, we decided to kill that with the last because we want to get all the percentage uh, in this dungeon before we pull the last boss. Uh, so keep that uh, in mind, and uh, the rest of the mobs, uh, basically they do, uh, as you can see, the longbow, they just target somebody, they shoot them, uh, etc. So uh, there's plenty to heal here, uh, especially on a week where there is explosive, because you have to kill the explosives as well. Uh, but for uh, a range healer, just uh, stay away from the Lance Master so you don't get into trouble with the cleaves, because uh, he can actually cleave you. Try to use your cap totem and maybe even your hex, uh, which I don't think I used here because this group was uh, was pr pretty good. Uh, and then you can also have help uh, interrupting the Lance Master with the Disrupting Shout, uh, which is a long cast, so nothing to be scared of uh, there. And also that should be priority of your tank. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention, actually, the uh, range mobs, the long bows, uh, they will do this rain of arrows, right? And uh, those are little circles on the ground that you need to dodge. Uh, it goes without saying that you have to stay away from them, but uh, one thing to remember is always watch your feet, uh, even if people are getting charged and you have to kill orbs, uh, because you saw that this... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I was on full health, but uh, they can actually one-shot you on higher keys, so uh, make sure that you keep moving, uh, otherwise, obviously, uh, it's a very unpleasant situation, you might die. 
Now, uh, the goal here around the first boss is to clear all three platforms and um, basically free those um, cannons, those ballistras, so that uh, you can use them on the boss. Uh, the boss is a big dragon that's flying around. He's not going to land until you clear all three ballistras. So uh, just keep going around uh, following your tank and clearing the mobs. Uh, as you can see, there's a rain of arrows uh, happening again here. So make sure to dodge and uh, pay attention to uh, whoever is getting charged by the war spears especially dangerous if they get two stacks uh, at some point because that's uh, a lot of damage um, all right so those are the first uh, few fun pulls uh, but the trash doesn't get easier here uh, nevertheless uh, after you kill this Lance Master, the boss should land. And even on Tyrannical Weeks, uh, you usually don't want to keep lust for this boss because uh, it, it's a pretty easy boss. Um, it's almost a tank and spank fight. Uh, so there's no significant need to invest any kind of resources into this boss. So uh, he's going to spank your tank a little bit. Uh, be prepared to heal. And as you can see, Mark with the school, there is an ad that runs in. Uh, you basically need to kill that this ad because uh, it's trying to reach one of the cannons, one of the ballistras. And uh, if it succeeds uh, and finishes a cast there, uh, you'll be in a big trouble. Uh, so you can use your Earthbind Totem to slow this down. You can even try to stun it. You don't need your Cap Totem for anything else. So um, just help with this ad, whatever, uh, as much as you can. Whatever direction the ad is running to, it's going to be one of the three cannons. As you can see, this one is running to the cannon on the right-hand side of the screen. And that cannon also has a timer, which shows uh, when it's going to be ready to be fired. Uh, once that cannon is ready, you have to press it and uh, you don't have to wait for the boss to do the eruption Which is what we're trying to prevent. You can press it right away, right? You, th there's no need to wait uh, Stun the boss and let your uh, group melee it. Other than that the boss has just uh, two mechanics One of them is the big circle that you need to run out from this is actually a melee uh, If you're the healer, you're probably as long as you're not a melee healer You're probably running around and clicking the cannons. This is the most effective part. So uh, you won't be uh, bothered by that, that circle that happens right now but he also does the uh, shards cast which uh, hits everybody in your group don't panic it does hit hard especially on tyrannical weeks but it's not going to one shot you and uh, you will have plenty of time to heal that damage before the next shard cast happens because nobody should be taking damage from anything else whatsoever except from your tank, of course. So uh, basically, there's the Shards of Stone. It's going to hit everybody. Uh, I have my uh, Healing Stream totem rolling. I'm not really worried. I, I try to do some Riptides, but then my priority is clicking the cannon uh, as quickly as possible. And then while I run to the next cannon, I can just uh, use the Riptides and cast a few totems to top people off. So rinse and repeat, uh, kill the boss. As I said, pretty, pretty easy fight, even on Tyrannical Weeks. Uh, but this is just the warm-up because uh, th this dungeon escalates and becomes uh, much more interesting in the uh, later parts uh, here. Obviously, you need dragon riding skills to get from uh, one boss to the other, from one area of the map to the other. And you can use those uh, tornadoes to basically speed yourself up and uh, throw yourself up without using some of the Viger ch charges uh, that your dragon has. All right. Um... Pretty much the next two bosses are uh, the same uh, in order to be activated as the first boss. So there's a few things around the boss that you need to clear and kill. And then the boss becomes active. And uh, this boss is probably one of the more challenging bosses uh, in the pool. Probably one of the hardest. Um, so first let's go through the trash around it. Um, that's very important. So uh, here there's a totem that's marked and usually you want to kill that totem as quickly as possible because it does pulsing every damage and uh, then it leaves a patch on the ground that you need to move away from. Uh, the rest of the mobs do the storm bolts. Uh, you want to interrupt as many of these as possible um, because they hit hard, especially on a fortified week. Uh, so um, those mobs, I think, are also stunnable, uh, hexable. So make sure to help your uh, group to mitigate the damage uh, as much as possible. And this pool here is only has three mobs and the totem, so it's not that scary. Uh, but it escalates uh, in the later pools uh, since there's more mobs in there. So be prepared. Uh, if you saw the little uh, elementals that were floating around, you can have Purge and uh, actually get rid of their shields. It's very easy to kill them this way. And now we have this big beast 
which is going to do several things. So uh, the Thunder Strike is something that you definitely want to interrupt. You saw it hit my Warlock. Luckily, it was the Warlock. He almost got killed. Uh, not so lucky for the uh, Warrior. I think the Warrior uh, got hit by the uh, Thunder Strike or th the Thunder Stomp. Uh, actually, uh, which is uh, an AoE around the big mob, and he's also going to chunk your tank uh, with the uh, two Storm Shields uh, mobs that are around him. The Storm Shields uh, actually do get the Thunderclap, is the skill that uh, I think actually killed my uh, warrior, and uh, the other two mobs, you can actually purge their shields as well, so they die quicker, uh, because they chunk your tank uh, pretty uh, heavily as well. Now, uh, I don't run purge here, but you actually need purge for the boss as well, because he gets a buff uh, that you can get rid of and then he's going to do uh, less damage um, so uh, I didn't I guess I, f I forgot to pick it up for, for this uh, specific dungeon but uh, I would highly recommend you to have it unless you have like a enhancement shaman or something else that can purge the boss uh, then you can actually get away uh, w without it all right, so next pool, uh, same thing. We have a totem, we have the uh, storm bolts going on, but uh, in here we also have the storm color mob, uh, which I'm just uh, targeting right now. And uh, this one at some point is going to do a couple of things. So it summons the small elemental, that's fine. You can just cleave that down. All of the small elemental actually targets somebody and uh, does a bunch of damage to them. So if you can interrupt that cast and don't get the little elemental summon that's great but the other thing that i interrupted a little bit earlier was the tempest the tempest is a channel that uh is going to happen i think in any moment now after the storm ball probably and uh this uh well i let's see if he's uh, going to cast it at all there we go so if that goes off as you can see it's a channel and it gets a uh, stacking dot on everybody in your party so this is your highest priority here you want to interrupt that because this can actually wipe your group uh, the other thing to watch for, of course, is the uh, stuff on the ground that you need to dodge, but uh, the mobs also uh, spawn those little orbs. If you actually get the orbs, it's a buff to your damage and healing, right? They hit you for a little bit in the start, but then they buff you, so you actually want to collect these, and they are a mechanic that you're going to see during the boss fight uh, as well. So uh, another pool of these, uh, there's also a storm color here, so uh, basically what I'm doing here is... Um, I'm, I'm hoping that my party is going to interrupt the storm bolts, but I am watching for the Tempest because this is what can actually kill your group. Um, if you have somebody designated to kill uh, to kick the Tempest, then you can help with the storm bolts, uh, and those are not easy to heal through, especially if they go through. Um, but uh, again, uh, they will chunk one person down. The Tempest is going to uh, kill everybody. Uh, if you get too many stacks. Uh, you can use your cap totem here, of course, to help. And uh, there's an orb to the left that nobody collected, right? You can just run to those and get them, uh, help yourself a little bit. Uh, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but, uh, you know, if, if they give you something and it's free, why not take it, right? All right, so then uh, we have to, so we had to kill uh, those three groups down here. And now we fly up for the fourth group, uh, which is over here. And, uh, of course, this one also has a storm color. So, um... Again, be prepared to watch for the Tempest. And uh, people will be taking damage here because uh, the Totem is going to cast some AoE. Uh, somebody might get hit by the stuff on the ground. As you can see right now, the little lightning bolts. Um, so uh, be prepared to do a, a lot of healing here. Uh, although I would say try to save uh, cooldowns for the boss as well because it's a relatively hard boss. So um, hopefully your group plays good here, they interrupt everything, and you can have all the cooldowns uh, for the boss as well. Uh, it's not the end of the world, okay, so um, I, I did die here, right, uh, because we didn't have enough interrupts. I got hit by a storm bolt, uh, I might have eaten something on the ground as well. Uh, this, this thing's happened, right, uh, especially on higher keys. Um, you might actually get one-shotted by uh, the stuff on the ground, even if you don't get hit by a storm bolt. Uh, so stun totem and uh, even hex, things to interrupt, uh, all of that could help you up. Make sure you are full mana before this boss starts, especially on Tyrannical Weeks, uh, because there's going to be a lot of damage uh, going out uh, to your party members. And uh, the big mob, uh, the big patrol that we killed uh, at the beginning, make sure you clear that as well. You can actually play the boss without killing the patrol, but you have to be very careful not to pull it in the middle of the boss fight because that will wipe you. All right, so uh, first thing to note here, watch the ground. As you can see, there's a lot of things uh, happening on the ground. You don't want to get hit by one of those uh, swirlies because you will die. And that, that's the end of the fight. And then uh, the boss will do, uh, he's going to shoot out these orbs. 
uh, which you need to collect. The other thing that he did uh, was those big circles around you. So first, make sure you don't overlap and you don't kill uh, other people with them. And second, once they expire, they hit you for a huge chunk of damage that you have to heal through, but they also kill all the orbs. The point here is the orbs should not be reaching the boss because they buff the boss and uh, then you die. So you need to collect all the orbs. And uh, in when you get those big circles, you actually want to use them to kill the orbs that uh, basically are going to reach the boss. Now, when you pick up an orb, you see that uh, you get a stacking buff. Uh, the orbs do hit you for a little bit. They do take for a small amount of damage, but they also buff you a lot. So uh, if you have uh, the maximum of 10 stacks, as you can see, I'm running around collecting orbs. If I have 10 stacks, that's 50% uh, 50 increased uh, damage and healing. So uh, basically, you want to get yourself up to 10 stacks as quickly as possible. Um, and uh, then uh, just make sure that uh, you eat an orb every now and then uh, before they reach the boss. So you, you renew your buff because the buff uh, eventually expires. And uh, you want to make sure that you are at 10 stacks before the boss does the uh, electric storm, which is what you need to uh, survive. Now, uh, after he does the big lightning circles, you want to heal everybody up uh, as quickly as possible, of course. Uh, keep collecting uh, orbs. And then, of course, uh, make sure you clear thundering early because you might not be able to move later on. And uh, this is a fortified week, so uh, we're going to kill the boss quickly after this electrical storm. But here is where you want to pop cooldowns. So you are at 10 orbs, uh, and then uh, this is going to be a channel that does heavy damage to your party. So uh, have Ascendants ready, uh, Ancestral Guidance, Spirit Link Totems. Uh, it does look scary, but keep in mind that you are doing 50% increased healing. So uh, you will need cooldowns for this, of course, but uh, you're also doing a lot more. So one Riptide is going to be healing for significant significantly a larger amount and then uh, hopefully your group stays close so you can hit them with uh, chain heals um, I guess it does look easy here but uh, if you're not at 10 stacks uh, you'll be healing for 50% less, so it's much harder to survive that phase. And also, on Tyrannica Weeks, uh, we basically had to go through two phases here, uh, but on Tyrannica Weeks, you might need to survive three or even four uh, in certain groups. So uh, be prepared to do a lot of healing in this uh, fight. And uh, the other thing that I'll mention is, usually you're not able to get to 10 stacks for the first Electrical Storm, because that comes uh, relatively early in the fight. So uh, be prepared to have a bigger cooldown for that first phase. And then uh, for the subsequent ones, you should be at 10 stacks with no problem. So uh, make sure um, to, to uh, survive the first one and then hopefully the next ones go uh, easier. Um, I did I did mention that, but the boss does get a buff that you need to purge, uh, especially on Tyrannica weeks. And uh, watch your tank because uh, he might drop low as well. Um, then uh, you fly up and you move to the next area. So, uh, big pool here. There was actually a flying patrol of birds that was uh, put on top of this pack. Um, that's why my tank actually procced uh, his cheat dead. Uh, a lot of uh, things going on here. Uh, but, um, so, it's a lot of mobs. But there's just a few things to watch for. So, uh, on these um, hills that you need to clear to, to actually activate the boss, there's always one named mob. Uh, it, it, it has a different name on each of the packs, but this one will do the uh, Dead Bolt Volley that uh, I was just targeting the mob here. Uh, it's called Soul Breaker or something, right? Uh, and you want to interrupt that because this is heavy air with damage to everybody in your party. Uh, that's your main priority here. The rest uh, of the mobs will cast Dead Bolts. Those do damage, but they are single target. So uh, technically you can heal, tr heal through those and uh, you can also stun those mobs, etc. Uh, the other mob that uh, we had here are the birds. The birds do the frontal that you need to dodge, obviously. Uh, so uh, make sure not to get hit by that, because I think it one-shots. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the mob that does the chant of death, is, that's basically just uh, an AoE around it. Uh, that also fears if you get hit, but just don't get hit, right? Uh, that's not stunnable or interruptible, so just make sure you stay away from that. Um, the Mystics, uh, I think, also do a cast, which is the uh, Swift Wind. Yeah, so that's uh, another frontal to dodge. Um, 
and that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, the other thing that happens in, in these pools, uh, one of the mobs will actually, uh, not here, but on, on the hills, uh, it's going to do a cast which uh, separates you from your soul, so uh, what you need to do is run to your soul. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you're doing less uh, damage in healing, I think it's 20% reduction if you don't get your soul. Uh, so uh, generally you just want to make a few steps to the side and get your soul back so you're uh, at full capacity. And the beast colors here, they do a disruptive shout or something that uh, you also want to interrupt. Usually you pull those separately, so uh, it's easy uh, to do that. And uh, the other thing that needs to happen here is you need to get to 95% trash uh, before you pull or after you pull the second boss, doesn't matter. But before you get to the last boss, uh, because there's going to be no trash killing there. The trash there is extremely hard, so you try to avoid it. And um, you're basically going to get most of your percentage in this uh, area. Um, all right, so uh, again, chant of that. Uh, make sure you're uh, clearing thundering uh, because people might be running away to get their souls so it might be harder to get them so shadow soul is cast right now as you can see there is a little animation that goes away from you and it lands somewhere right uh, you can start chasing it even before it lands so it's quicker for you to pick up uh, your soul uh, watch for the name mob uh, there's no name mob on this pool right this is just a trash pack not on the top of the hills which you need to clear to activate the boss so uh, there's going to be no dead volleys uh, dead bolt volleys going off here uh, so you can uh, well I lied uh, there's one right so I'm targeting the um, uh, soul breaker or soul shattered mob so if there's one just watch for that right Th this is your job don't worry about the rest uh, dodge the frontals and um, I think that's pretty much it right those pools do look scary but uh, in fact, there's not that much going on. As long as you interrupt the volleys, uh, you can even like stun the mobs to get rid of the dead bolts, and um, people should be just uh, not taking damage. Unless, of course, they're staring the AOE, etc. Uh, one thing that could happen is I think this happens right here, but uh, when they do the uh, soul shatter, um, the direction where your soul is going to go is basically uh, random. So uh, let me see if it's here. Uh, this one is close, but sometimes uh, your soul could go to uh, the sides and uh, it could be a close to another pack or a, a patrol. In these cases, I would just uh, stay put and then I would not chase it because you don't want to do uh, ninja pulls and make it hard for your tank, possibly uh, wipe your group. Uh, nevertheless, you are going to be pulling those patrols, you're going to be pulling a lot of packs around here. Uh, so that uh, you get to that 95% threshold and uh, you get all the trash that you need before you reach uh, the last boss. Um, yeah, so um, I don't think there's anything uh, else that's uh, interesting uh, here. There might be a few different mobs uh, in some of the pools. Uh, some of them might have uh, a small mechanics that you need to worry about. But uh, the, uh, once you know what all the mobs do, there's nothing scary in this uh, So uh, let's uh, fast forward here through the trash. Um, one thing that I mentioned, I think it is the warriors that do the mortal strike on your tank. Uh, so obviously be prepared to heal them when that uh, happens. But uh, after you clear all the uh, little hills, uh, which are marked with uh, yellow dots on your mini map, and you get to 95%, you're ready to do the boss. And keep in mind that sometimes uh, you might actually pull the boss early uh, before you clear all the trash and then after you kill the boss you can uh, just pull a few more packs to get to 95% so keep track of that uh, because sometimes uh, you might actually fly to the next boss area before having 95% and uh, that would be very unpleasant in most uh, situations um, all right so uh, this boss is a uh, th th there's two mobs uh, that you have to deal with and um, there is also a small uh, RP that you need to activate uh, for the boss to spawn. Make sure you're at full mana, of course, and uh, you can have somebody run to the boss after you kill, uh, kill the last uh, heal uh, so that the boss is active after you, you're done with the trash. All right, so uh, two mobs here, uh, one uh, male and one female, Terra and Maruk. Uh, Terra is basically a ranged boss uh, that's going to shoot your group with the, the, the quick shot. As you can see, uh, you have to heal through those. Um, and uh, the other one is a uh, warrior, which is melee, but uh, you want to keep them on top of each other, otherwise if they're too far apart, uh, they basically um, buff each other, 
Uh, right now we didn't clear tendering, luckily we managed to live, uh, but obviously clear tendering early here because uh, that would be very very bad um, if you get stunned and you wipe because of that. Now, uh, let me pause here. So, the uh, Maru guy is going to do a fight for Roar, which is this uh, big circle on the ground that you want to be out of because you get feared if you're inside. And then, uh, Terra is going to do the Spirit Leap. So, what, I, uh, what I'm pointing on, on the map right now is this white area. This is where she's going to jump. So, this is where you want to run to, generally, especially if you're melee, because uh, the tank is going to drag Maru on top of Terra once he jumps there, and you have to run out of the uh, other circle anyway. So if you're confused and there's too much movement in the fight, you can actually use this as a guidance of where you need to go next and uh, this way you always be close to your party and uh, it will be easier to heal them, do damage, uh, etc. Of course, dodge the tornadoes, I'll talk about this in just a second. And uh, the other overlapping mechanic that happens, uh, I think, right here is the Guardian wins the Chikats. So this just pushes you back, but it is interruptible, so uh, you want to interrupt it and that's the only interrupt that you need to worry about. And at the same time, Maruk is going to cast the Earth Splitter, which is going to leave those uh, big circles in the ground that you need to avoid. And once he does uh, that once, he's going to cast it again, so we're going to have a second set of circles. Uh, just make sure you dodge those. And uh, also, if you're stuck on one side of them, don't worry, they will disappear relatively quickly. So just keep looking for uh, the next... Um, uh, mechanic to um, watch for. So uh, Brutalize is a tank uh, buster, so make sure you are avoiding this. And then uh, the most important mechanic is the Gale Arrows that uh, are going off right now. Now uh, this was actually pretty pretty bad, but uh, what you want to do is you want to stack because you get a hit for a lot of damage obviously, and then you get those tornadoes going out uh, from you. Now if you stack, all the tornadoes will be coming out from one point, then they'll co collapse back to the same point but uh, if you stacked you will basically uh, get them uh stacked as well so there will be less uh, to dodge so melee wants to stack on top of each other and um, range wants to stack on top of each other if you cannot stack run away from other people so that uh, their tornadoes are not close to you and they don't hit you uh, instantly right uh, that's the most important part now we got very unlucky uh, people got feared here by the way because they didn't run out of the circle but luckily the boss is almost dead uh, where we died we got unlucky because uh, we got the thundering and we got struck by the lightning um, in this case, we should have probably just moved away from each other and uh, we wouldn't uh, have to worry about that. Um, but again, dodging those tornadoes is actually the biggest uh, thing because uh, after you get hit, as you saw, they were uh, a lot of damage by itself. You need to top people off uh, because the uh, quick shots might actually finish uh, someone down. Uh, other than that, it's just uh, spot healing. Uh, nothing to worry about in this fight. Um, just topping everyone off. This is where you want to save cooldowns after the Gale uh, Arrow. Everything else just uh, dodging and uh, running after the uh, Terra boss. Um, usually you lost that boss because there's two mobs, so you cleave and you kill them uh, faster, they, they share uh, their health pool. Uh, but on Tyrannical Weeks uh, you might actually want to save the last four last boss, which could be harder um, in, in some situations. Alright, so uh, we didn't get to the 95% uh, threshold, so right now we are just uh, killing uh, a few extra mobs uh, to get to uh, that percentage. Uh, we are exactly where we need to be. And uh, I also have a video for this skip, but uh, you want to fly straight to uh, the last boss, uh, aiming for the thundering mob that you're going to see in between those uh, little hills over here. And uh, you won't have to deal with uh, any of the trash uh, before last boss, uh, which if you go to the other side of this big hill, uh, you, you cannot fly there. So you have to go on feet and like uh, dodge mobs, etc. Here, uh, you just go straight to the last boss area. Uh, be careful not to pull the patrol on the right hand side right now on your screens and um, then you can just uh, kill the last two mobs which will give you those uh, missing 5% before engaging the last boss. Those mobs are uh, relatively easy on uh, for the fight uh, as well, so the Ravaging Spear just move out of that, that's one of the mechanics. Uh, they both have a cast, which is a fear, you need to interrupt that, that's, that's a must. And then uh, they have the Stomp, which is that frontal, and the Charge, which uh, basically targets a player, and then uh, you have to get away from the line, which uh, Bakara is going to uh, run through. Uh, the broad stomp is uh, the front though, so basically just dodge all of these, watch for the uh, casts, 
um, which uh, basically if they fear they can fear into the balls or into the trash packs on the site and that will be uh, devastating pretty much uh, so watch for the interrupts there's the uh, one interrupt on Bakara right now uh, or Balak sorry uh, so we managed to uh, get this one off and then rinse and repeat uh, one, uh, once one of these mobs dies uh, the, the other one is uh, enraged so if you can keep them close together uh, so that you don't have to deal with the enraged mob for too long that's fine but um, generally don't worry about it even if it enrages uh, it would be at relatively low health so you'll be able to finish it relatively quickly and uh, because those two mobs are not very scary you might even have them uh, put at the boss especially when they're low at the end um, sometimes that actually even happens if the charge is towards the boss uh, we might accidentally pull it uh, that's why the tank is actually keeping him back here to that fence so we are away from the boss all right and then the last boss uh, which could be uh, challenging but as long as you survive the transition uh, it's a pretty pretty easy boss um, now the first goal here is to get the boss down to 60 percent um, he does a few mechanics which uh, then become uh, much harder at the end uh, in in the third phase um, but uh, the first one is that uh, tank bleed that he puts on the tank so be prepared to heal your tank especially on tyrannical weeks uh, it hits a lot then he's going to target a player uh, as you can see that's uh, my warrior right now with the spear uh, he's going to troll the spear hit the person for a big amount of damage and then charge towards them so uh, you want to be away from that line of charge uh, because if you get hit you get one shot at and whoever is getting charged after they take the hit they need to move to the side very quickly so they don't die now we are using this little rock here uh, which uh, doesn't prevent the spear from being thrown but uh, when he charges he hits the rock and uh, at least you don't have to dodge that uh, you don't have to use that mechanic but it's helpful so as you can see I'm running behind the rock right now I'm going to take the damage from the spear uh, I'm scared because I've seen him run on top of the rock sometimes he didn't this time right but I just made sure and I uh, run to the side um, and then the other mechanic that uh, he's going to do uh, last often but uh, nevertheless uh, it is part oh he didn't do it but uh, you see it in the last uh, phase now when he gets 60% the four mobs here get activated save all of your cooldowns for that right so, uh, this is the scary part this is where you need to survive lost everything so first interrupt the mobs because those storm bolts as you can see they chunk people for more than 50% of their health so if uh, they hit by two of those uh, they're dead uh, make sure you have your spirit walkers grace here because there's the winds that uh, move you around and uh, you can also use stuns etc watch your feet because uh, this uh, blue swirlies will be here until the end of the fight and if you get hit you get one shot at so um, it's very hectic uh, you can even pre-assign who's interrupting which ad uh, how you're stunning them how you're handling them but there's going to be a lot of damage going on so be prepared to heal even pop all of your cooldowns if you have to uh, because after you survive this uh, this last phase it's it's hard but it's much easier so uh, the boss is going to do the same mechanics but now they're enhanced they do extra stuff so uh, first the um, uh, bleed that the tank got is now a debuff that you need to dispel that uh, charge that you just saw crackling up here was named this is a frontal that you need to dodge uh, which uh, one of my teammates didn't and after he does that you get that little circle around you uh, which is going to drop a puddle on the ground so uh, if you're still using the rock you want to um, drop this away from the rock so you don't have to uh, stay on top of it after that and then the other thing that happens as you can see once he casts the spear it still hits very hard but then it also drags everybody on top of the person who got hit by uh, the spear uh, conductive mark is the uh, uh, tank buster so you need to dispel that and uh, once you get uh, so dodge this obviously does that uh, this does a lot of damage and if people don't dodge it they die and then move away quickly with your polo um, so you need to do a little bit of healing here you need to top everybody off and then when he throws the spear uh, you need to top everybody off again uh, because uh, you get drawn in and uh, everybody takes damage but of course uh, you need to move out first so uh, it does look scary all of these abilities as you can see they do a lot of damage but um, as long as you watch your feet and you stay out of the blue stuff on the ground nobody should be dying here uh, from one shots right and then you have plenty of time to top everybody off so here is the ground mechanic that I got hit with I, I, I got confused on which side to run with 
uh, to run to. Uh, to avoid this, you can actually stay a little bit closer to the boss. Um, the cone is smaller there, so you'll be able to run away quicker uh, in one of the sites. Um, and uh, yeah, once you get to that last phase, uh, once you learn the mechanics, uh, there's nothing to be scared of. You have plenty of time to heal. Just watch your feet. Don't die on the um, blue swirlies and make sure that you are topping everybody off as quickly as possible. Dispel, dispel the tank uh, and you should be fine. Um, honestly, we, we handled the mobs in the transition relatively quickly, but this is the scary part. This is where people will die uh, if uh, interrupts are not uh, well assigned. And uh, this is where I usually pop my Ascendance, I have my Spirit Link ready, even the Central Guidance, and I also drop my uh, Healing Tide Totem to make sure people are healed up to a uh, full uh, and they have enough time to kill the adds. All right, so uh, this is the Knockhood Offensive. Uh, it is a relatively fair dungeon with a lot of uh, interesting bosses, a lot of interesting fights. There's also a lot of uh, personal responsibilities uh, from your teammates uh, to dodge stuff and not die on bosses. But uh, once you know the mechanics, once you do them correctly, it should be uh, relatively easy to handle those, uh, uh, those boss fights and the trash in between. Right, so uh, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I have more videos like that coming up on my channel, so feel free to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care and happy healing.